I'm going to show you how to do linear regression with a regular scientific calculator. And for this particular video, I'm going to be using the Texas Instrument model that you see here. In my previous video, I actually show you how to do that linear regression with this other model. So if your calculator looks anything like this, please check my other video. Uh, so now the other thing that I want to remind you is that every single model has their own way to deal with how to enter data and how to retrieve parameters of the calculation. So make sure that you actually consult with your user's manual because all the details are going to be dependent on what exact model of calculator you have. The main idea here is that your calculator should have this statistics mode. This one has it. And if it's there, make sure that you have the two variable statistics mode because you're going to enter values in the X, Y fashion. And we're going to be doing linear regression with that. Now, that being said, remember that the whole idea here is that you do not need a graphing calculator or a computer. As long as your data set is relatively small, you can easily handle the problem with these regular scientific calculators. Now, for the purpose of illustration uh, of linear regression, we're going to be working with these uh, kinetics problem. Basically, we're tracing how the concentration changes with respect to time. We have three different models, all of them uh, integrated rate loss in the uh, straight line fashion for zero, first, and second order. Each of them, you're going to see that the independent variable corresponds to the time. The, uh, the y-axis or dependent variable is something related to concentration. Concentration, straightforward concentration for zero order, the natural log of the concentration for first order, and the inverse of the conversation, uh, con conversation, concentration, the inverse of the concentration for the second order. Now, the slope in every single case is related to the rate constant for the reaction. And the intercept is a parameter that has to do with the initial concentration of your experiments. OK, we're ready to enter the data. So another thing that I want to mention is that in this case, for these particular types of problems, we actually have to do three linear regressions. And then we have to compare the value of the correlation coefficient, r squared. I'm going to show you how to do that with the calculator. And we are going to compare that value because the one that gets closest to 1 that is the indication that your data fits that model better or that the model fits your data better. OK, so let's go to statistics mode. So second function is statistics. Now it's asking me one or two variables. We're going to be x, y point. So yes, I want two variables. Now I'm going to start entering the data with this data button. So you can see that it created, uh, it's expecting x and y first values. Now let's do the first. Uh, model the straight line for the zero order it's going to be time in the x-axis concentration in the y-axis so I have my table I'm going to enter that here zero for my x and then I'm going to be using these uh, arrows to move through the x and y uh, parameters here so I enter the concentration and I'm going to be doing this for every single one of the data points in the table so don't forget to use the arrows to move to the next one the second time is going to be 900 and then the R rows so I can move to the next one I'm going to enter the second value of the concentration so let me check if I entered correctly yes so 10 to the minus 2 third uh, 1800 and then the concentration don't forget to use the arrows because if you don't use the arrows then what you are going what it's going to happen is that you're going to overwrite whatever you already have in that particular entry so uh, we're getting close to the end of this. So fourth data point, let's go to y, 9.52, 10 to the minus 3. And then final point, it's 6,000. Oh, I, uh, OK, let's 6,000. There you go. Now it's 6,000. And then the final y is going to be 7.3, 10 to the minus 3. That's all I have to do. Uh, I also can go back and check uh, that I have all the points entered correctly. This is the first point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point. There you go. So everything's correct. Now let's retrieve the data that uh, the parameters from this statistics mode with this value of a statistics variable. So once we get here, we have a bunch of 
uh, parameters that are significant for particularly your statistics classes or statistics that you are running. For us, we're going to be interested in these parameters, the slope indicated with letter A in this calculator, the intercept indicated with the letter B, and the value of R, which the square of that value is the correlation coefficient. So this one here, this correlation coefficient, the closest it is to one, that tells me that there's a good correlation between the variables that I'm analyzing. In this particular case, between time and the concentration for this particular model of zero order reaction. So note the values of R square and also the values of um, the values of the slope and the value of the intercept. For now, we cannot conclude anything. It looks okay, 0 0.94, but what I have to do is to run regressions for every single one of these models and compare which one fits better to the data. Okay, so next one, I have to enter uh, the model of the linear equation for the integrated rate law for first order. So let's go back to data here. So now it's asking me the X and Y values again. Now X, it's already there. These are not changing. In every single case, the time is still there. What I need to change is the values that I have to enter for the concentration because in the model of the first order is not the concentration, but the natural log of the concentration. So I have to change all of those values. So what I need to do is I can just basically come back here and say, well, not the concentration, but take the natural log of the concentration. That's it. Now I have to do that for every single one of the Y that I have on my data. Now, another thing that I'm going to suggest uh, is that you check what's going on here. Every single time I enter an operation, wherever this one digit is blinking, it's going to substitute that operation that I'm entering. So this one, if I enter natural log, it's substituting that zero where the blinking is happening. So be careful because in this case, it's now difference numerically, but it well might be that you are deleting a digit that is significant in that case and that it's going to change your result. So make sure that you don't make that mistake. So the other one, uh, Y, so it's going to be natural log. And then finally, the fifth point is natural log. That's it. I entered the data that I needed. I can double check if the uh, data looks okay for what I enter. Seems pretty good. Okay, so now I have the fifth data in there. Let's recalculate or ask the calculator to recompute the variables for these uh, statistics. Again, we're not going to deal with these numbers for now. Your statistics will be depending on what kind of problem you are trying to solve. Here we're interested in the slope. Again, now the slope related to the um, the rate constant and the intercept rem related now with the natural log of the initial concentration. So note those because they have changed from zero order to first order model. And we're interested in, cal in looking at the R square value. So we take this R square that value and there you can see that now it's improved a little bit. The, f the zero order was 0 0.94 for the first order is 0 0.986. So this is clearly better. What this is telling me is that the first order model fits my data better. Now, this is not the end of the story. You will have to do the same idea, but now to do the linear regression for the second order reaction. Once you do that, remember to get back to this R square value and compare what you get with respect to the other two. Now, the one that is closest to one, that's going to be the best uh, model. I'm going to tell you from now that the best model for this is going to be the second order reaction. So that'll be the answer that this data follows a second rate order. But you need to corroborate that entering the data. OK, I'm going to stop here. Good luck. And let me know later if you have any comments or questions.